With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050. number one team of the nation is coming to town. Hello everyone and welcome to the Watson Brown Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. This is Tennessee Tech head coach Watson Brown. I'm your host Buddy Pearson and we appreciate you tuning in this week. You know the Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles will host Jacksonville State on Saturday and the Gamecocks are ranked number one in the nation in FCS. The Golden Eagles are coming off another matchup against the top 25 team, the Colonels of Eastern Kentucky. And coach, you go from the frying pan right into the fire with the number 17 team facing the number one team in the nation. Yeah, buddy, it's, uh, it was a hard six days on us. We're two and two. It had a two-game winning streak. Things were really good and lost two games in six days. Lost our starting quarterback uh, through that. And uh, so it's been, it, it, we're, we're a complete different bunch six, seven days later wow. than we were just, just a, a week ago. But it's football and you got to react to it and you got to get going from it. Uh, disappointing at, at Eastern, uh, Thought we played hard, still made a lot of mistakes. Uh, defensively, we've got to figure something out. We're really struggling there more than any time since I've been at this school. And offensively, we've got to react to, to losing Jerry Davis. Yeah, that uh, Kobe Brown was getting his first official start. The game was moved to Georgetown College in Georgetown, Kentucky because of security issues. Yes. Just uh, It was just a weird week and, and, and a weird weird circumstances surrounding the game. Yeah, it was, and weird from the, from the game before. It felt like twilight zone. Yeah. Uh, Nobody in the stands at Martin, uh, playing Martin and raining and everything. And quarterback's got a broke hand. We don't even know it. And I'm proud of him for playing in the game. Uh, so it's, it's been a weird six days. We got to regroup and get on down the road. Yeah, well, the Golden Eagles kind of got off to a rough start against the Colonels as we check out the first half highlights brought to you by Wendy's Breakfast of Cookville. As we said, this game played at Georgetown College in Georgetown, Kentucky. And Coach, very hospitable of those folks to uh, kind of open up their field and their stadium for you guys. Uh, uh, very much so. I told the players after the game, I said, before we leave here, I want this locker room cleaned up and not make them have to do that. And, and, our, and we did do that. Uh, just a blown coverage. We had them third down and eight, played the run really well, two downs in a row. And a freshman corner just blew a coverage on us and uh, gave them an easy 80-yard touchdown. And I, I just thought that kind of set the tone a little bit, especially for our defense. Uh, this is a beautiful catch here. I think he's well covered. A AJ's got to turn the other is, way for the ball. He didn't look for the ball the proper way. He is 6'6", six, six, Coach. He, he gets, yeah. He, he gets he gets up he and gets he's a good football good. player. I thought that was a very nice play. Kobe does a good job here. Uh, this is our run pass option off of that, and he could have run. He saw the guy get behind everybody and took off with the ball. Kobe had some very nice plays. Ladarius uh, Van Leer, another, uh, just uh, another good, good night. night by Ladarius. Yeah. And uh, we just got to keep feeding him. And I think for this is years over, he's really going to be a factor for us. And and uh, this was a very nice drive. We're down 17 nothing, and uh, we took a nice long drive down the field and went in, scored, made it 17-7. Coach, your uh, secondary. Well, this is a a, a two-yard run by Adam Lane, and. It seemed like their offensive line just uh, really opened some big holes for the running You know, backs. they did, and, and but, buddy, when we watched the game, uh, they didn't knock us back. Yeah. We're, we're not gap control sound. We're, we're linebackers. Different people were not in the proper gaps. And 
Uh, we, we've just got to cut back a little bit on defense, and we're playing with so many young players and inexperienced guys this year that I think we've tried to overdo them, and uh, we're going to see if we can help with this a little bit. A.J., uh, boy, he's just becoming a really good player. We play in two freshman corners a lot during the game, and, and A.J. is one of them. Dante Rudolph is the other one, and they're both just getting better and better and better. Yeah, Flemister, that was the first interception by the secondary this season, and they would get a lot more. They wound up uh, with three interceptions. Uh, not the way you wanted to go in uh, at halftime. What kind of message did you deliver to your team at halftime? You know, buddy, I just wanted to calm down, just believe in ourselves a little bit. We're all over the place. Uh, I thought we got, we got big eyes a little bit early in that game, and they got after us pretty good. Came back out in the second half and played much, much better football on defense in the second half of the game. And, and we simplified some of the things we did on defense in the second half. I thought it helped us some. Yeah, Tennessee Tech had a big comeback last year against EKU in Cookville. Would it happen again? Well, let's check out the second half highlights brought to you by Miller Lite and see if the Golden Eagles are able to overcome the big deficit from the first half. Uh, that's a little bigger deficit than we had <laughs> last year to overcome. <laughs> of course, the secondary came out and uh, Malik Hall there with uh, the second interception of the game. Buddy Malik is playing really good right now. I thought he, he jumped on borders, this big tall 6'5 guy, and they tried to attack him in the second half and throw a lot of fades and different things over there on Malik. And, and uh, he was on him in, in a lot of times one-on-one -on -one with the guy, and I thought he did a great job. Brock McCoy is a highlight film all by himself. Brock will do something every week. Look at that. <laughs> Hurdles the defender if he'd have just stayed in bounds. If he'd have stayed in bounds, he makes ESPN with that one. Nice catch by Chris Cates uh, down on the goal line. So very nice drive by our offense there. And, uh, Kobe did some good things in the game. He just uh, – just, uh, uh, in, uh, Inconsistent to say the least, and uh, I think he'll play better this week against Jacksonville State. How would you like to get your first start against this bunch and your second start against the number one team in the wow. country? Wow! So Kobe stepped into the front. You got something against quick. him, Coach? Uh, I guess he might be asking that right now. I don't know. We're in an all-out blitz here. They threw the ball on fourth down and ten, and threw a little throwback pass, and we we messed up and didn't cover him from. Uh, from the blitz, uh, there's a spy blitz on somebody's got that guy in that area and we just didn't take him. And Kobe Brown, really the only big mistake that he made, it was a fumble late in the game. Uh, they were, this is what he did worst in the game is he, he let bodies bother him. Right. And he's just starting jumpy real quick. I mean, he'd get the ball and get ready to throw it and then just take off running, buddy. He's got to learn sense of time and sit in the pocket, throw on time. Uh, those are the things I hope and think that the young man will do better this week in his second second start. Yeah, the Golden Eagles fall to Eastern Kentucky 48-17. Again, that game was played at Georgetown College. Taking a look there, uh, Kobe Brown, 16 of 20, 148 yards and a touchdown. Brock McCoy, nine receptions. He continues to be very productive at wide receiver, 71 yards. Van Leer, 18 rushes, 59 yards and one touchdown. And Coach, now moving forward, what do you take from that game to get ready for Jacksonville State? Well, not, not a whole lot other than that we've got to get ready for even a, maybe a better team than the one we just played. We hit Murder's Row right here and together now, and we go this, we just went to Eastern Kentucky, Jacksonville State's two, EIU's three, and uh, they've been the top three teams in our league since we won it in 2011, and nobody really has come close to them at that point. So yeah. somehow, some way, somebody from those three, from down below those three, it's got to knock them off. But so far at this point, it just hasn't happened. When you talk about the top three teams, the race for the OVC crown is starting to take shape as we check out the Ohio Valley Conference scoreboard, which is brought to you by Hi Boo. Taking a look at uh, some of the uh, uh, games from around the league, it was Eastern Illinois defeating Southeast Missouri. Very close game there. UT Martin defeating TSU. We saw UT Martin a couple of weeks ago. They look very solid. We'll see TSU last game of the season. And it was Murray State defeating Austin P. The Governors fall to 0-6. The Racers coming off a loss to SEMO. They bounce back with a win. So, like you said, Coach, there they are, Murderers Road. Jacksonville State, Eastern Kentucky, Eastern Illinois, all at 2-0, Martin at 2-1, uh, and SEMO. So you see we've got SEMO, Eastern Illinois, Eastern Kentucky, Jacksonville State uh, in the next uh, the, well, the, three weeks. The preseason poll, that's the way it went, one, two, three, four. Wow. And uh, that was the way it was. And, uh, of course, those top three have been there. Martin has been solid the last couple of years, too. And uh, after playing Martin, they've got a very good team this year and a senior quarterback. And uh, so the league's falling out the way that it looked like it would, and now we're going to play two of those top three back-to-back. -back. All right. We're just getting started on the Watson Brown Show. We've got more coming up. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Watson Brown Show. You know, there are some hard hitters on the T2 defense, such as defensive back Jimmy Laughlin, who is in this week's Golden Eagle Player Profile, brought to you by Zaxby's. First time I started playing football was probably around fifth grade, I think. It was the first time I started playing like actual tackle football. Uh, the most influential person in my life would have to be people, it would be my family. Um, you know, my mom and dad and my sister. I remember the first day uh, when I started football, I came home, I had bruises all over my body, you know, and I didn't want to go back the next day. And, you know, they told me, you know, just try it out one more day, you know, see how you do. And then, you know, I ended up falling in love with it. My favorite moment as a Golden Eagle during my time here would have to be probably this last blackout game against EKU. Um, I didn't get to play, I was hurt, but just, you know, beating a top ranked team like that, you know, the atmosphere, you know, just everyone was so excited. It was a great moment. I think the main goal uh, for me is obviously to win, you know, an OVC championship and see where we go from there. But um, as an individual, would just be, you know, to be the best teammate, best player I can be this year. If there's one player on this team I look up to the most, I think it'd have to be uh, Stephen Bush. Um, you know, just the attitude and work ethic he brings every day, and especially, you know, persevering through, you know, a tough injury last season and still coming back and, you know, still has the same work ethic every single day. I think three things that every teammate should have would be uh, toughness, accountability, and uh, pride. When, I, when my time here is done, I just want to be remembered for, you know, going out there and leaving it all on the field, you know, not holding back for anything and just being that guy who um, was just always out there giving it his all, you know, having a good time. If I could describe Tennessee Tech football in one word, I would have to say passion. Well, Coach, he certainly plays the game with a lot of passion, and you've been using him in a lot of different roles this year. Yeah, and it's uh, he's a team player. I'm sure he'd like to be able to sit still and play one thing, but when we kind of go to nickel passages, uh, packages, playing more of the, the passing teams, he moves up. When we're playing more of the hard run teams, he's back playing one of the safeties. So uh, this week he'll be back playing one of the safeties because Jacksonville State can sure run it right at you. <laughs> but he's been he's been one of our best players since he's been here in his four years, and. Great kid, um, great team guy, but also one of our best football players. Yeah. Well, you know, so far this season, we've watched an offensive lineman try his hand at pottery. We've watched a defensive back try his hand at playing the drums. And this week, it's Ladarius Van Leer trying his hand at milking a cow. You don't want to miss this in their Out of Their Element segment. Check this out. I'm Ladarius Van Leer, running back for Tennessee Tech. And today I'm gonna to learn how to milk a cow. How you doing? I'm the I'm, uh, man there. doing this. I'm Prairie Nice, and welcome to Nice Dairy. And me and my brother and my dad run run this operation. And uh, I hear that you like to milk a cow by hand. <laughs> I've never done that before, so. Well, would you like to? Yeah, why not? Why not? All right, this one right back here might be the easiest. It's called prepping the cow, and uh, just wipe, we wipe them off with paper towels and clean their sacks. And wipe them off real clean. And uh, that's all you do, you just squeeze it. See if you can do that there. This is milk. Yeah. <laughs> I need some. I think I'm doing it wrong. Cause ain't much coming out like yours. Okay, what you gotta do, well, let's try this other tip right here. Just, when you put your arm, you just take, see how my fingers are? Like that. Look. Nothing. Squeeze hard, hard. Squeeze hard. Yeah. All right. Got the little milk coming out. Make me some sear. Am 
my head. Look at this. This is nasty, dude. Hey, thank you for showing me how to make a cow and let me come on your farm. And it's the first time for everything. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, you can come back anytime, Ladaris, and we'll we'll put you to work doing it all someday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Ooh. think being a farmer is in Ladarius Van Leer's future. Ladarius, get your degree. <laughs> keep don't running, like, the, keep running the football, I man. I do not think you're going to farm. That's not, uh, oh my gracious alive. It didn't look like he was having a blast. No, it didn't. <laughs> no, it did not look comfortable. <laughs> he did not look comfortable. He was definitely out of his uh, element. I think that was, that was, that is the most out of the element one we've had yet. Yeah. There's no I don't doubt know how you top that. I don't know. I can't wait to see what's going on in a couple of weeks. <laughs> hey, you want to know what else is going on? on around Tech Athletics. We'll wait no more because Dylan Vazano is here to tell us all about it in this week's Golden Eagle Update. Thank you, buddy. Significant milestones, record-breaking performances, and of course, another Golden Eagle soccer victory. That was the week it was for Tennessee Tech Athletics. We'll start with the milestones. You can see we're beginning with volleyball right behind me. The Golden Eagles, it seems only fitting. We always talk about these two players. They're the ones with the milestones. Junior Sharon Anderson, Tech setter, with 32 assists in Friday's match against Belmont. She now has 2,000 in her career, and for Cody Dodd, 13 kills in the match against Belmont. Belmont. She now has 1,000 career kills for the senior. Let's go to record-breaking performances. That'll bring us now to women's golf. Golden Eagles at the Fall Invitational down in Georgia. They shattered the all-time record for the lowest score of 54 holes combined by 18 strokes. Junior Whitney Robertson, she led the charge. The junior tied the record for the lowest score on the 54 holes, also for the lowest round score. We now go to Golden Eagle Soccer in a battle between the two best defensive teams in the conference. Tennessee Tech, a 1-0 victory against SIU Edwardsville. A goal in the 29th minute by junior Kaylin Pruitt, her team leading third of the season. Golden Eagles, 4-1 in conference play. That matches the best five match start in conference action matching the 2000 team that's our golden eagle update buddy back to you a lot more to talk about we've got uh, some questions from some third graders for one of our players and we're also going to talk about jacksonville state stick around we got more watson brown show coming up in the ncaa division one football championship subdivision the game is played with perseverance integrity passion character and sportsmanship as he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans, every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student athlete and as a member of his campus and community. The NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision. Every down, every day. Welcome back to the Watson Brown Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. It's time now for our Kids Corner brought to you by Pepsi. This week, Elliot Norman gets quizzed by a third grader from Jerry Whitson. Take a look. What is your favorite position? Uh, well, I play linebacker. Played a little bit of quarterback growing up, a little bit of running back, but I think I've always liked playing linebacker because you get to be on defense and you get to hit people. <laughs> do you do you play? What 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 position would you play if you did play? Quarterback. Quarterback. What is your jersey number? Number 49. What's your favorite number? Uh, 50. 50? You can say 49. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever won the Super Bowl? No, but we're trying to win a conference cha championship this year, so it's a little bit a little bit next step, but you know, we're working our way up there. Have you ever broken a bone? Yes, I've broken my elbow, I've broken my hand, uh, I broke my collarbone. I think I, I broke my hand playing football. It was, it was rough. Have you ever broken a bone? No, but uh, I had my head busted open. Dang, how'd you do that? Uh, I got hit in the head with a golf club. Oh, wow. But you're okay? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Are you scared of anything? Uh, I'm scared of spiders. 
<laughs> Are you scared of anything? Uh, not that I can think of. Good. Can you do a backflip? I can do a backflip off a diving board into a pool. Can you? I can do one on a bed. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, I hope you don't have any spiders in your locker room. Oh, geez. Might be the end of <laughs> Elliot. We had a spider in there. He, so he may be jumping up on the thing. And it's a good thing you don't play anybody are, named spiders. So yeah. Deep. No I nickname mean, spiders. They're, they're, <laughs> <laughs> you don't play any spiders. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. I don't think he's show for the game. No, you don't play Richmond, so that's good. Yeah. How about the young man said, I had my head busted wide Yeah. Up. <laughs> with a <laughs> golf club, no doubt. That might hurt. He's played a with bit. some of the people I've played with. <laughs> Goodness gracious. With TTU celebrating at Centennial, we focus each week on a special moment on the gridiron. This week, it's a record-breaking interception by Josh Simonette. It really can't get much better than this. The length of the field simply won't allow it. Cornerback Joshua Simonette set a school record when he made a play that not only broke the record, but will likely never be broken again. He returned an interception 98 yards for a touchdown, a distance that could be broken, but odds are firmly against it. The play came early in the second quarter of Tech's game against rival Austin P on Saturday, October 4th, 1997 in an Ohio Valley Conference game at Governor Stadium. Under 83 degrees sunny skies on the Govs homecoming and with Tech clinging to a 3-0 lead as the home team mounted a potential scoring drive, Simonette, who had spent three seasons in the NFL, stepped in front of the Austin P receiver and gathered in a pass attempt from Adam Pineo and raced on touch for 98 yards to score. Tech took its lead up to 29-0 before heading home with a comfortable 36-3 victory. Certainly some great moments. Uh, in uh, the centennial of Tennessee Tech, and Coach, uh, you've had your share of great moments coaching here too. A 98-yard interception return, like I said, doesn't get much better than that. I don't know if we've had one of those. Yeah. I take one of those. Like you said, we got our first interceptions in our secondary this week, so maybe we're going to make some strides. I remember when he played, he was a really good football player here, yeah. and went on and played in the league for a while, so that's neat. Yep. Well, Tennessee Tech has a very tough task at hand after traveling to, to Georgetown, Kentucky last week to take on Eastern, Eastern Kentucky, the 17th ranked Colonels. The Golden Eagles come home this Saturday to host the number one team in all of FCS, Jacksonville State. And of course, it's a conference opponent. And Coach, it just doesn't get any easier for you. Doesn't ease up. We look forward to it. We're excited about playing this bunch. I think everybody gets ready to to play Jacksonville when they're the they're the preseason pick and they're ranked number one in the country. Everybody wants to take a shot at them, and, and we'll, we'll give it a shot. We did some good things against them last year at times, on the first half especially offensively. Um, so we'll see. Um, I know our players are excited. We've got a lot of Alabama kids on our team, and I know our players are excited about playing them. And, and, um, but they are very, very good. There's no doubt about that. There are no weaknesses on this team, in my opinion. They're... Uh, very good in the secondary. The defensive line, of course, has been their strength this year. There's just nobody slowing their offense down a lick. I mean, they're just scoring high 40s, 50s, any, any, about anything they want to do. And um, everybody just struggling. Here's a nice play by us last year, and a daggum big lineman picks it up. <laughs> and I uh, think that uh, uh, Marty knocked him down here and hurt his knee a little bit on that play. I, yeah. think, he, I think he went out on that play, but uh, of course they're, they're a, very good. This is a Jacksonville State team that took Auburn in the overtime <laughs> at Auburn. Yeah, and so was the so was the team. Eastern Kentucky had uh, Kentucky down 14 points with two uh, with five minutes to go in the game. Yeah. So we're 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 jumping into the fire right now. We're taking on the good fellas and the, we're playing a bunch of men and. I think it'll make us grow up, and maybe it'll help us as we get on down the season here. And with Jerry Davis, your starting quarterback out, Kobe Brown will make his second start against the number one team in the nation. He will. Like you said, he may not be uh, – he want, may wonder what's going on right now <laughs> when it's his turn against these guys. But uh, I think he'll play much better this week over last week. I think he was really nervous. He didn't even know he was going to play or start the game till the night before the game. So. Uh, wow. And then we didn't find out that Jared had a broken hand until the next day and when we did an MRI on him. Well, Coach, I think the forecast is not calling for miserable as the weather was against Martin. Hopefully it'll be much better. I hope we have a nice crowd and cheer these kids on. I'm proud of these kids are playing really hard and, and uh, our future is very bright and I just want to see us keep getting better every day. All right, kickoffs at 6 p.m. at Tucker Stadium. You want to be there when Tennessee Tech takes on Jacksonville State. For Tennessee Tech head coach Watson Brown, I'm Buddy Pearson. We'll see you next week on the Watson Brown Show.
The Watson Brown Show has been brought to you by IWC Cash and Carry, Zaxby's, Wendy's Breakfast of Cookville, Miller Lite, Haibu, and Pepsi. With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050. 